Amen. God is good. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. God is truly awesome. Amen. I was, we were leaving home today and I was at the stoplight. And I told my wife, I said, honey, I'm excited. Because, and it wasn't just because of what God is doing for us. I'm excited for what God is going to do for you. Hallelujah. God is good. I don't want to get. Amen. How long? How long? How long do I have, Bishop? Amen. Okay, thirty minutes. Okay. No, no. I'm saying that because, see, I understand this time or this day. Uh, I was thinking about this morning. I said, I remember when I was a young, a youth, and this day would come, and. When when I when we when I lived in Lexington, the, the the stage downstairs in the lower level would have would be covered with gifts. I, I mean, you you I couldn't if I told you you wouldn't even believe me. I would have to actually take a picture. I mean, bikes. Uh, I mean, you whatever you could imagine, big wheels. You name it, it was there. Amen. And when we moved to Atlanta before we moved to Kipling Street, amen, Bishop Embry would have all of them on the altar. So imagine this altar with gifts. I mean, there were so many gifts to where the kids couldn't even sit on the front row. It was from the pulpit. to, And I don't remember many messages that Bishop preached that day. Because with that many gifts, as a, I mean, you know, you're sitting there looking at the gifts. I know that had my name on it. I remember mama had, I mean, my mama had, you know, she, I know she, I saw it because she had us carry the gifts to the car. Amen. So you walking with the gifts, looking at your name on it, and she in the door, you looking back saying, you look in there, dude, she tight lipping the whole time. Amen. But what she would do is, about maybe end of August after Labor Day, we'd be sitting around eating. It was four of us, four boys. And she would ask us a question. What do you want for harvest? Think about that for a second. And I was getting ready this morning and I thought about that. What do you want for harvest and our minds would just go berserk because we was like oh my god one year she had the nerve to tell us a dollar amount that we could spend to my god that ain't my message but i just thought about that this morning because we're in a season we're in a season, see, we can't afford, when, 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 when Bishop says we're in this season, we cannot afford to let that season end and no harvest. Amen. I digress. Amen. But we thank God for all of you. Thank God for Bishop. Thank God for lady, amen. Thank God for, amen, the ministerial staff. I hate that I, amen, I minister, I deacon Jason. I just spoke something, you know, amen. Amen, I deacon Jason spoke last night. We thank God for him, amen. Amen, I ask you quickly to uh, go with us to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Uh, verses, we're going to start at the verse 14, and we're going to end... Let me see. Uh, I don't know exactly where we're in, but we're going to start at the 14th verse, the 25th chapter of Matthew. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. I, uh, our minister Tracy was messing with me. Amen. She saw my Bible and 
she was pointing at the print like you you got a, a eye you got an eye disorder brother you know, you know anybody know Mrs. Tracy she <laughs> she she going she going to give you a dig every now she got an eye disorder hey man i i, I was i had to uh, facilitate a, a a class on yesterday in dc and left my glasses in the cab hey man so i'm walking by faith and not by sight hallelujah <laughs> Amen. But before we get here, I, I, look, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but I, I, I want to let the Lord say what he has to say. But I was catching, I was talking about seasons. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'll say that, I'll say that one more time. We cannot afford to allow seasons to come and go and not take advantage of that time. I, 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 I took my book bag with me and I, and I took all the things that I thought that were valuable or that I needed for the trip to DC because I'm in Falls Church and certain things, like, well, I, will, I want, I'm gonna put it in my book bag. And, and, and I, I got out of the cab, left my glasses, realized I left my glasses, the train came and the door, it was a short train. I was on the orange line and it was a short train. So the, the doors opened and trying to be a, a good Samaritan and, and good, you know, I started letting folks on, you know, because I'm from the South. So, you know, you, I, ain't, I ain't with, I know better now. But I was, I was letting them on, and it was my turn to get on because I had let a few people get on. But as I was going on, the doors closed on my bag. Being, being that I'm in the Marine, but I was in, I'm in, I was, I was in the Marine Corps, so I'm, I was taught to think quick. So what do I, what do I decide to do? Let the bag go. Or do I keep the bag and let it ride with me? Some of us aren't taking advantage of seasons opening and closing because we have not decided what we are going to let go. See, we, 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 oh man. oh, man. We are in a place. See, 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 see. And I, I, I ain't got to my, I'm, I'm, I want to get here, but I, 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 I feel that, see, when, when, the, when, when God speaks through our pastor, see, seasons come with signals. And when he says we are in the season of sweatless victories, we cannot afford, even though we are good hearted folks, to watch and let others go on to because we risk the doors closing on us. Think about that for a minute. See, the season is here. See, we in, <laughs> God is good. We're in the midst of two seasons. There's a season where your, we're in a season now where your resume means nothing. It's about your favor and anointing. So, even if you think that you're on, you may not be worthy or qualified anointing wise I would turn down my plate Amen. get on the, a couple of prayer calls Amen. and get to the point and put myself in a position that God sees me we cannot afford 
to let the doors close on seasons after season, after season, after season, and after season, closing. And our default is we get real spiritual too. I'm waiting on God. No, he waiting on you. He's already, see, see, I know when fall is coming. All I have to do is look at the leaves. They turn colors. I know when spring is coming. Pollen is everywhere. So we are in a season where God is trying, not trying, God has a blessing plan for you. Why not take advantage? The environment is already laid out. It's already set for you. All you have to do is walk in it. I was thinking about this the other day. Some of us aren't getting a harvest because we waiting on a finished product. See, we don't, we, 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 we don't want to cultivate the thing. Uh, I'm finding out some stuff about myself that I'm being real transparent about. And I told my wife, and she knows this, I cannot stand putting anything together. I despise it. If I go to the store and buy it, I want it already put together, Doc. See, I, 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 I'm one, and even if I got to pick it together, I look at the instructions and I just get, ooh, my God. I can't stand it. My wife been talking about Ikea since I met her. And I ain't been yet. And matter of fact, when I drive to work, there's a big one off on the left at exit 158. I be looking at, I be side on, I ain't going. But I realize that that has a direct or indirect connection to my faith. Because there are some things that we're going to have to assemble to get to where we are going or to receive the manifestation of whatever it is we desire. Ah, hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. But are we willing to do it? Hallelujah. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go real quick. Uh, Matthew 25, 14. Uh, I, I'll stop midway through. Just follow me. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling, is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Are you planting or are you burying? I ask the question again. Are you planting or are you burying? Both have similar actions, but very different expectation. When I plant something, I expect something to manifest itself 
after a certain time, if I plant collards, I, I'm going out every day and I'm, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm putting, look, country, chicken wire around it. For my garden, see, chicken wire keep some, some stuff out, you know what I'm saying? But, but, but I, I, I'm cultivating it, I'm, I'm dressing it up, I'm pulling up the weeds, I'm going around it, making sure, checking on it every day. Bishop said, I, I think it was Michaela that had a watermelon seed or something, and it was started to go, and she would check on it. Probably every day, you know, look at it, make sure it had the proper sunlight, make sure it's watered. Are you planting or are you burying? Burying has a, a, a different kind of, no expectation. I, I, I don't even want nobody to know that I had it. I, I'm putting it there. I'm hiding it. I don't want anything from it. Inconspicuous is there. Folks will walk over it. You don't even put a landmark there. You don't even want nobody to know that you had it. Are you planting or are you burying? Amen. I love this particular amen verse or set of set of verses in scripture. But what I, I, I there are two things that stand out to me. One is the master. took note of their ability before he handed out talent. Don't despise what God has given you because he took the time. He thought of you and he was under no obligation to give anything to his servants. He was a man that had these were people that cut his grass. They did his hedges. They washed the dishes. Some might have even washed his kids. They were subservient to him. There was a gap, a gulf in between them and society. When he walked out, they knew he was the master and they were the servants. And another thing that stood out to me, that when he left, he didn't give any demands. He just gave them the talent and left. He didn't say, now when I come back, I'm expecting something. You know, I, 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 you need to run my money when I come back, bro. I need to have it. I need to have it in interest. Amen. I don't know many of you watch Good Times growing up. Sweet daddy, every time he made a loan, he would come in with, with Big Bubba Smith, was his bodyguard. And he would come in, and he, you know, he'd throw his coat off, you know. <laughs> Hi, sweets. That's what JJ would say. Amen. But every time he loaned money, he said, I needed an interest. And the interest that he was, was charging was just out astronomical. But the master never made a, 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 a demand on his servants. But two, planted in faith, one planted in fear. So if there was no demand, that leads me to believe that faith breeds creativity. Faith breeds innovation. See, faith, you don't see faith. You don't even have to have seen it in your mind's eye before in order for you to believe it. There is no reference point for faith. If I could touch the hem of it, see, she, there was nothing on her news feed. She had never seen it before. Actually, she wasn't even supposed to touch a man. But she woke up that morning and he was on his way to Jairus' house and she said, <gasps> An opportunity if I could touch 
She didn't even know it was her season. And it was actually somebody else's. It was actually somebody else's. But she said, whoa. I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity. 11 years she woke up. Couldn't find a remedy. She woke up that morning hemorrhaging like she always had. But an opportunity arose and her faith made her creative enough to crawl on the ground. She crawled to him through feet, through dirt for her healing. Some of us don't even want to mess up our clothes when we come. We, 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 we. Uh, 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 we, 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 we too busy trying to decide if what we think it makes sense. Nobody had ever tore the roof off to get healed, but they were innovative. They were creative because their faith. They could have walked home. They could have said, well, it's too crowded. We can't do it. No, one of them said, no, bro. <laughs> How about we turn the roof off? That's a good idea. Engineering at its best. And they lowered him down so Jesus can see him. Zacchaeus was creative. His faith made him creative. He said, I, I ain't tall enough. To see him, so I won't climb to the highest point where he would be. <laughs> he climbed. It, it, the scripture don't say this, but I'm embellish. And Christ saw his faith because he looked right up at him. Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to your house. Zacchaeus didn't expect. He woke up that morning. Still running game. Still kind of, but he was, his heart was pricked a little bit because he said, I wanted to know to see who Jesus was. I don't know if it was him or somebody sent him there, but he took advantage of that opportunity. Are you planting or are you burying? Are you planting or are you burying? Are you planting or are you burying? Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Because he's coming back. See, he, 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 when he comes back, see, we have a mandate to multiply. See, when, when, when he created the garden, Adam he created outside of the garden. Took Adam, put him in the garden. When he, when he thrusted him out, he said, be fruitful and multiply. He wasn't just talking about children. I, I, I got that down back. I think we all do. But he was telling him, whatever it is you see, Make that like you see here. Are you burying or are you planting? He told him that he was going to work by the sweat of his brow. We just got told that we're going to have sweatless victory. Mm. <laughs> sweatless victory means I'm blowing you out. It ain't no close game. 
I, I, I watched Floyd Mayweather fight one night, and I'm like, Lord, have mercy. This guy ain't even sweating. Sweatless victory. Nothing, no work is involved. Because see, we're, 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 we have, we're still burying because we're trying to actually figure out is, is if we're waiting on someone else to, to, to manifest what Bishop Smith is saying. I'm going to say that again. We're waiting on someone else to manifest what Bishop is saying just so we can believe. Just so we can believe. But God is telling you, you ain't going to have to, it ain't your resume. He was like, I don't really have no resume. I work in here. My job really don't require a resume. Uh, we're busy talking about <laughs> what God gave us. It's okay that you're a one talent person. See, God, God is not concerned with your ability. He knows you have it. You've been thought about. That's why he gave you one. Work what you have. So he can tell you, I've made you, <laughs> you've been faithful over a few, but I'm going to make you ruler over many. You're not a one talent person forever. Just imagine what will happen when you decide. When you make a choice. That I'm going to multiply what I have. See, we're trying to see. <laughs> we we tell, well, it's a recession. Everything is going on. I know what Bishop's saying, but he don't know my. He don't know my. Planting a famine. Amen. See, Isaac planted in famine. God, he, he, he went to Abimelech. He was really on his way to Egypt. Because see, uh, if he had went to Egypt, I don't think that he would have been as blessed as he would have had he planted in famine. See, God was trying to work something out in him. So he told him, you plant here. And he was a hundredfold. Now think about this for a second. A hundred times what he planted. I put one in. I got a hundred. I put one in. I got a hundred. I put two in. I get two hundred. I put five in. I got five hundred. Are you planting? Are you burying? Are you planting? Or are you burying? My God, again, we can't afford to let these seasons go by and not have any manifestation. It makes no sense. We, we're, we're, we're saying that we are people of God. But we are not taking advantage of where we are. He's telling us, you ain't even got to sweat this season. All I need you to do is invest in me. See, Paul was, and, and, and I'm almost done, I think. Uh, I don't want to hold you too long, but Paul was reading down the, I call it the Hall of Fame of Faith. <laughs> and when he, when he finished reading, he said, see, there's too many things that have happened in this particular congregation for our faith to be small. Amen. 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 Mm. Mm. Ah, 
Sister Optimus, two times. See, when, when, when they announce a fighter <laughs> in this corner, the two time champion of faith. And it adds a little ambiance to, because when they say it, he gets a little swag, you know. You know, you know what I'm saying? They get a little, you know, you know. He starts feeling himself a little bit, you know. I used to watch wrestling back in the day. Booker T. <laughs> Five time, five time. And he would get that swagger with him. A two time champion of faith. Elder John Harris, a two time champion of faith. Sister Aaron. A champion of faith. See, I, I, I'm, I'm reading off. <laughs> oh, my God. See, I'm reading off those that he has healed in our midst. So once Paul finishes, he says, okay, now that we are surrounded of such a great cloud of witnesses lay aside every way let the bag go make a choice to get on the train you cannot afford to let this season pass your family is depending on you It's depending on you. Amen. See, uh, we, <laughs> Pastor is talking about corporate faith. That's a united faith. Amen. A faith that we can cover more ground. Amen. See, we keep asking for our territory to be expanded, expanded or enlarged, but we don't have faith. You got to have faith in order for your borders to be enlarged. Battles must be won. See, the United States was originally 13 colonies. All on the East Coast. Good, bad, and indifferent, they decided that they would go into war to obtain other territory. There are some battles that we may fight. But the great thing about this one is we, we in a season of sweatless victory. We, 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 we don't even have to fight a battle now. I'm going to believe God on today. Amen. I'm going to two more things and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end. I think. Amen. Lay aside every weight and the sins that easily beset us. I, I, I don't want to go too deep, but that word weight, I decided to look up that word and I looked it up. <laughs> and it's a, a Hippocrates was a great physician in those days of Rome and Greek, and that's a Hippocratic word. It actually means a tumor in the Greek. We're walking around with things that are eating away at us, but it's been with us so long that we have become comfortable with it. We're buying bigger clothes so it'll fit. You're supposed to be an extra large, but you're wearing a 2X because you decide that you don't want to get rid of the tumor. Cut it away. Cut it away. We haven't decided, some of us are still burying or not, haven't decided whether we're going to plant or not because we haven't decided whether, what, that, that what God has for us is a good exchange. We haven't decided whether the exchange is good or not. 
I don't know. Because there's no value in kingdom things yet for you. Because we have existed all of this time to the point to where we can walk around. I, I, we're, we're functioning dysfunctionally. We're, 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 we're threshing wheat in the wine press. Think about that for a second. Threshing wheat in a wine press. Out of fear. Because we, when, 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 when you thresh wheat, there's so much dust that comes up. So you're so scared that somebody's going to come take it. That you're threshing wheat in the wine press. Season after season, season after season, season after season. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Burying instead of planting. Burying instead of planting. We don't want to exchange the known for the unknown. But I'm telling you, any time that God is telling us that a season is upon us, he's going to do a work in it. He is not a God that he can lie. Ain't God good? Hallelujah. Are you planting or are you burying? God wants to know. Because see, the thing about it is, God is so awesome. <laughs> Some of us, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We're worried about, see, Pastor, you, you, you made a decree. And God, I know God was speaking to you that we, we, we about to move. See, see, some folks are worried. I know preach, son. I sang that song. You can't sing it with daddy. I mean, amen. And, and some folks are worried that the move, that, 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 that they're going to be left behind. I was at the kitchen sink the other day making me some coffee. God said, no man left behind. See, that's why corporate faith is so important. God said, he's, and the, the, Christ, the scripture said, and he saw their faith. It doesn't necessarily mean that he saw the man's faith as well that had the palsy, because the man with the palsy was just lying. He didn't have the strength to bring himself. So what we are going to have to do in our corporate faith right. is no different than the buffalo. See, when the predator comes, <laughs> the buffalo take those who are young, put them in the middle. They move from water hole to grazing ground. Water hole to grazing ground. Until everybody is mature enough to eat without worrying about a predator. You're sitting there wondering why. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't think God's going to take me with them. But he saw you lying in your own blood. No compassion. Cast out. But he picked you up. Wiped you off. And when, when, you, when, you, when you were old enough, put an earring in your nose. Hallelujah. Don't worry. We ain't going to leave you behind. Corporate faith thinks. Are you planning? Or are you burying? I'll say this and I'll close. Our, 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 whether we plan or whether we bury. Has a lot to do with. Where are we going? I say that to say this. At the end, when the master came back, he asked the servants, he said, what do you have for me? The fifth said, I took what you gave me. I got five more. I got 10. The one with two said, I got two, but I made two more, totaling four. 
And he said something that stood out to me. You are a faithful servant. Enter in to the joys of your master. Now, we'll see that and we, you know, we, we think in heaven. And that's great. That's the kingdom. But I want you to understand something. When, when you're here in this season and you, uh, and you are obedient and hear the word and, are, and, and, and your harvest is, is presented and you see the manifestation of your harvest, you're going to live in a season that is different than it was before. The gulf between you being a servant and a master is closing. Enter into the joys of your master. If Bill Gates went and told you, I'm going to let you, allow you to live in one of my homes. You have access to my butler. You have access to my fleet of cars. Your credit is now expunged. Enter into the joys of your master. Are you planting or are you burying? That's a question we need to ask ourselves, saints. In God good? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hearty hand, praise. That's a great thing to think about. See? See, we, we, we can no longer worry or try to make sense of the season. We can't afford to sit and think. Make a move. You've been still too long. If you need healing, and you know you need healing, don't leave. The presence of God with, without what you came for. Don't wake up another morning. Don't go to bed at night wondering. God has it for you in this season. Sweatless victories. Sweatless victories. Promotion with anointing. See, see when we, we see the, 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 when we when we accept these things, that's when promotion comes. I mean, spiritual promotion. And, and I told, um, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this, but I told, um, our, see, barriers are blessing blockers. We can't afford to block. See, when, when we decide we bury, we're actually hindering the move of God. Because our blessings or other folks' blessings are hinged on our ability to plant. And I, and I shared this with, with Bishop, and I'll, and I'll close. I said, I told him, I said, Bishop, you know, when, when, I, when I did the illustration of pointing out the windows of heaven, I mean, I did it why you are an elder. And I told him, I said, now you are a vicar bishop. Promotion has happened. So I told him that promotion means that the elevation point from which God pours out blessing is a little higher. And the higher the elevation point, the wider the elevation, I mean, the wider the, the, the blessing radius. There are going to be folks blessed that ain't even going to know that they got water on them. Folks just walking by. Is it, is it raining? See, that's where God has taken us. And imagine if all of us started getting promoted at the same time. God's going to do it. I believe it. 
You believe today? Hallelujah. Are we planters? Are we planters? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give God another praise. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. second brother Jeff I don't I mean to interrupt you I, I'm, I'm learning because God I don't know what God is doing I understand what God is doing it's just I have to be comfortable in where he's taking me but I don't want us to leave here today in the last great day and leave the way we were. Jesus stood up in the feast on the last great day. It said, if any man thirst, come unto me. Amen. Is anyone in need today? Is anyone in need today? See, we, I said this a few weeks ago. See, the, 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 when the water is troubled, we cannot afford to make excuses why we didn't get in. I even went on to say that there are some of us who even if I thought I was well, I would cannonball into the pool. We really don't even need to know what it is you're coming to God for. God is going to do some things in this season that is actually going to <laughs> baffle folks around you. See, when Isaac sold it got so, it, it, he, he became so wealthy that Abimelech said, you got to go. You actually, he had to move away. And then he moved away and got so wealthy to the point where Abimelech said, okay, I, 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 I know God's with you. 
So when a man's ways please God, his enemies will make peace with him. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is going to make a move in this season. He, 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 he's always moving, but this particular season is special. A sweatless victory. So that means that you are no longer have to fight with what you've been fighting with any longer. Does anyone else? Amen. Amen. I kind of like that. Amen. Almost the whole congregation is in the line. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, God, is that you're going to God for. Amen. Have faith today that whatever it is that you're going to God for, that God is going to make it happen today. Congregation, would you mind just stand with us real quick? I'm going to get ready to let you go in a minute. Just need to have prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for how you visited your people on today. We thank you for your word that came through Minister Johnson on today, God. Encouraging us to consider are we planting or are we burying today? I thank you, Lord, for as you use your servant to remind us, God, of the many things that have taken place in your house on today. We thank you for the complete healing of Elder John Harris. We thank you for the complete healing of Sister Sharon Harrison. We thank you for the complete healing and restoration of Brother Mike Jackson today. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, because we choose to believe your report. We thank and praise you for even the unspoken requests, things that people are going through they haven't even told anyone about, God. We thank you in advance for being a God who answers prayer. We thank you for what you did at the altar earlier today. We thank you for what you just did moments ago. We thank you for manifestation even after these services, God, because we believe your report. Our faith is such that, God, we still believe you're healing, delivering, and setting free. For your word tells us, God, you were wounded for our transgressions, bruised, for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon you, and with your stripes, God, we are healed. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, we thank you for Mother Bennett's complete healing today. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you for the victorious reports. Hallelujah. That whatever the doctors thought were there, was there, is not there, is not present. In the name of Jesus, God. We choose to take your word and to mix it with faith today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. You praise the Lord. Thank you for those of you who have been visiting with us for the live stream. Praise the Lord. It's been, it's been a treat and a treasure and a joy beyond measure having you with us on today. We know that you've enjoyed the services. God willing, we'll see you Sabbath morning at 11 o'clock. Until then, God bless you. Be encouraged. You know you ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. God bless you.